show, everybody. Our next guest's debut novel has spent 49 weeks on top of the New York Times bestsellers list, and so far, I know. That's not all. So far, it is the top-selling print book of all of 2019. Yeah. It is a story of Kaya Clark. She's a young girl abandoned by her family in the marshes of North Carolina. Here to help us navigate the murky waters of her book, please welcome author of Where the Crawdads Sing, Delia Owens! <laughs> title of the book, Where the Crawdads Sing, is, is it significant in any way? When I was growing up in South Georgia, I had a mother who was, I was so fortunate to have a mother who was not only a beautiful Southern belle, but she was also an outside girl. And she encouraged me to be a tomboy. She encouraged my girlfriends and I to go as far into the oak woods as we could go. She wanted me to experience real nature. And she would say to me, go way out yonder, where the crawdads sing. Mm. And so when I decided to write this book, this book is about how much we can learn about ourselves from nature. So it reminded me of my mother and her wanting me to go out that far so that you can experience nature. So I oh, named I love that. Mm. Your book is as much a coming of age romance as it is a whodunit story. And it's interesting because the book sort of starts off reading more like a young adult novel and then it gets more serious in tone as it goes on. So tell us a little bit more about the book. The book is a very intense love story. It's a murder mystery, and it's a courtroom drama. Mm. A lot of things going on. <laughs> but, but it's written in layers. And underneath those storylines, there are a lot of themes. And one of the main themes is how much we can learn about ourselves from our genetic past. And it's, it, it, it part of the, I, I wrote it so that the, murder mystery and the courtroom drama would be compelling and want the reader to move very fast and what's coming next, what's coming next. That was my goal. I also wrote some passages that describe the marsh in North Carolina where it's set so that the reader can go more slowly, mm. like drifting in a boat mm. and through the marsh, read more slowly. But the key is that some of the clues to the mystery are hidden in those lower passages mm. in, in the marsh. Oh, love that. Wow. So look out for that. Love that. <laughs> wow. Well, clearly, uh, clearly, Delia, people all over the world are loving this book. But here's the wild thing. <laughs> At the age of 70, this is your first novel that you've ever written. And <laughs> amazing. <laughs> and that's not all. <laughs> Because here's the thing, you are actually a zoologist by training and spent 20 years in Africa uh, researching wildlife as a zoologist. So how did your training and your history and your work in Africa influence and inform your novel? I spent 23 years studying lions and brown hyenas and elephants, and it was a great experience. And one of the most fascinating things to me is that in those species of mammals that live in tightly bonded groups, like the pride of lions, those groups are made up only of the females. The females in the pride stay in the same group all their lives. They're tightly bonded. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, the males spend the rest of their lives going from one group to the next for mating. And this is when my girlfriends back home said, you had to go all the way to Africa to learn that males <laughs> go from one group to the next. <laughs> but how it influenced my book was that while I was there, I lived many years in isolation. And it made me realize when I'd watch the pride of lions in the evening, I'd watch as I was waiting for the sun to go down in the desert and the, the females would be playing with their cubs and each other's cubs. It made me realize how much I miss my girlfriends back oh, home. Oh. And it made me think about how, uh, how much we are and need to be part of a group. Mm -hmm. well, as, as Melissa mentioned earlier, your book is a blockbuster. So many people are reading. It's, a, it's such a success. It's been... Um, on book club lists all over the place, including Reese Witherspoon's yeah. book club. It was a Reese Witherspoon book club selection, and she's actually acquired the rights to turn the book into a film. So congratulations. 
What can you what can you tell us about the process? Well, first of all, meeting Reese Witherspoon was great. You know, she's a Southern girl too. She says y'all just like <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah. So it was so much fun meeting her, and I'm I'm very excited that she's the one who's going to do the movie because she's adapted other books into movies, and she stays with the storyline very closely. And the, one of the important parts of the storyline is I, I wrote it about a young girl who, since we have the genetic propensity to be in a group, what would happen, how would it change the behavior of a young girl who had to grow up on her own? And so that's what the book, that's the, the one of the basic plots of the book. And uh, I, I really feel like Reese will stick with that right. and, and show that story. And, um, and, and, and the process now is that it's in the, 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 the phase of the screenplay is being written. Mm -hmm. And after the screenplay is written, they'll go. And one of my friends said to me, you should ask for a cameo role. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. You should. And so, I know. And so I said, yeah, I want to, um, as long as I can be in one of the scenes with, with Tate, now, you don't know who Tate is yet, but if, when you read the book, you'll see why I would oh. want to be in a scene with Tate. <laughs> that is good. That is a very good little nugget to leave us. Now, now, we've said it's your first novel, but you have written memoirs. You've written scientific papers. I'm curious to know how difficult it was to switch gears from, from writing academically, if you will, to, to writing fiction. Writing nonfiction. to me, I ride horses a lot. I've lived in Idaho for many years, and I... Uh, ride horses and riding nonfiction is like riding your horse inside of a corral. Oh. There's a big fence and you have to stay factual. You can't, if you want to make a guy a little bit cuter in the story than you wanted, <laughs> you can't do that. You have to stay with the facts, the timeline. When you write fiction, it's like riding your horse through the gate and going wherever you want to go. Because you can, your imagination is the only limiting fence. Wow. You can just go w write whatever you want. And my imagination just went really a little bit crazy when I was able to write <laughs> <Buck> Wild. <laughs> you started writing fiction later on in the latter part of your career, though. So do you have any advice for people who are in the same position and maybe, you know, halfway through a career and they want to pick this up? I would just say it's never too late. I mean, I feel, I am so glad that I'm, I love being 70. I'm a fun 70 and I feel, it doesn't make any difference to me what the numbers are. And I just feel like if you, if you have something you really want to do, it doesn't matter your, your age, just do it. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually glad I'm this age. If I was 30 years old and had a novel that, that has had the success, I'm so, thankful for the success, but if it, if I was 30, I'd be thinking, oh my gosh, what am I gonna write next? What, how am I gonna find, you know what? I've gotta have a career now. Yeah. I don't have to. I do not have to worry about a career. I can stop right now if I want to. Uh, well, Delia, this has been such a wonderful honor to have you here with us and congratulations. Thank you. Crawdads Sing. It is in stores right now. And studio audience, you've heard that the world loves this book. You are going home with your own copy. So <laughs>